I've never delayed big adventure long enough to fill a bucket. But I do have a bucket item that dates to 1992, drive from Dead Horse, Alaska, to Tierra del Fuego, Argentina. 26 years later, it's time. But first, I needed a vehicle. And a Jeep Wrangler was not my first choice. Growing up as a kid in the Midwest, I loved Jeeps. But around 10 years ago I went on a camping trip to Death Valley with a colleague, testing the early JK Wrangler against the competition. By the end of it, I couldn't justify the ergonomic and physical punishment for the admittedly massive capability. So two years ago, I bought a 1994 Toyota Land Cruiser project truck to make the journey. I paid too much, and the cruiser revealed itself to be not a garage project, but the Manhattan Project. I took this as a good omen. Adventure begins in the deep end, so why wait to get there? During a break from discovering enough gremlins to reboot the movie franchise, I had dinner with Jeep's West Coast Prairie Guy. I mentioned my plans for a six-month overlanding trek to Alaska. He said, you know, we've got a new Wrangler coming out, that might be a good test of the chassis. My outside voice said, that would be interesting. My inside voice said, HMMM. Anything's possible after 10 years, right? I might like it. Might. Many plans have gone awry on the way to this moment. It's taken more than a year to lock in a start date, because Jeep couldn't spare a Wrangler Rubicon. Everyone else in America keeps buying them. A suitable Wrangler was found eventually, but now the deed had to be done in three months, not six. What was going to be a comfortably paced, backwards roll up to Alaska and back has turned into the Rubicon Overland Cannonball. <laughs>